war is over. We win, right? The economy is, is very strong. And why is it strong? Now, sometimes you guys have textbooks, so be careful about this. Talk about the panic of 1919. This is, um, these are pr uh, textbooks that are constantly trying to find struggles and conflicts and clashes. The war ends like December of 1918, right? So this is the following year. The thing is that by 1920, our economy is booming. So why do they focus on this? They're focusing on this because they just want to see conflict. They don't want to see things doing well. Why is there a problem, economic problem, in 1919? You guys are very smart. You can understand this. Go ahead. Production during the war, is it high or low? Very high. Very high. But what is it going towards? More related goods. Okay? So when the war is over, you have some armored vehicles, but they have lots of munitions. They also have things like food and carts and transportation and, and, and boats and stuff. Once the war is over, they have to transition. Because not only was production really high, what about savings? They were high because people were hugely high. Of money because of they can't money. spend anything. Remember wheatless Wednesdays, meatless Mondays, you don't have any rubber. You can't spend the money because all the resources are going to the war. Mm -hmm. So you're working a lot, you're producing a lot, and you're getting paid a lot, and it's going into the mail, into the uh, bank, and there's, there's nothing to buy. There's no gas, there's fuel shortages because the gas is going to the war. So that means that when the war is over, you have this weird situation where there's actually a ton of money in the country, but not, still not yet to buy. So the panic isn't a panic like the economy is in danger. The panic is all about transition. Transition, you understand this word? Moving from one state into the other. And what, what's the transition from? Production still high, but now non-war. Like what? How about things like cars? How about things like radios? Things like toasters? Things like uh, uh, washing machines? Dishwashers? Ovens? Stoves? Appliances? These are things that people didn't have money for. There was not enough extra metal to do it. And yet the war is also production, but there's also a lot of innovation. And so we developed these things for the war. And then you have to transition. So they're no longer for the war. Now they're for non-war. So it takes a while, about a year. The factories have to be retooled, rebuilt. But as soon as they are, what happens? Boom! Everybody's money goes to spin. And once it's spending, then the businesses do really well, which means that they hire more people, which means they get more money back. And that's a booming economy throughout the entire 1920s. Not only that, they have to rebuild Europe. Where do you think Europe gets most of its supplies from? After well, remember, it was bombed to heck. It came yes. from us. So again, that puts our economy just through the roof. Yeah. Weren't we, because during all this, But we were, we were supplying a great deal. Uh, you guys have heard of the Red Cross, right? Yeah. Red Cross was invented, really, after World War I. And here's something you re really get to get. Uh, a guy named Herbert Hoover was in charge of the Red Cross. And he cleaners. was responsible for feeding Europe after the war. Remember, the war destroys that portion of Europe. It's just, they've been having a fighting there for, what, five, six years? No food, there's no crops, there's no nothing. So Europe is being fed mostly by the United States. And Hoover is responsible for this. Everybody thinks of Hoover as kind of like this hero because he fed very much a humanitarian Hoover. Does anybody know why I'm telling you all this? Vacuum cleaner. No. He's the, no. <laughs> He's the president. He becomes the president. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to, I don't want you to think about it now. It's not this unit. It's 1932, which is like a dozen years later. But just have in the back of your mind, the 20s has a huge, booming economy. 
because the demand is very high. Now, you don't need to know too much about economics, but you need to know a little bit. When the demand is high, then you can buy and buy and buy. What happens when the demand goes back down? Prices. They have to adjust. How many toasters do you need? How many radios do you need? How many cars do you need? Washer machines, dishwashers. Once you've bought them, then what's going to happen to the demand? What happens once you've rebuilt Europe? What's more to build in Europe? Yeah, they start building themselves. Do you guys see where I'm going with this? Anybody see where I'm going with this? Our economy just drops because no one, all, we stopped trading with Europe so heavily because they can, they got to a point where they can pretty much rebuild themselves. Not just with Europe, even within our own, within ourselves. Right? We bought the cars. We bought, the, we're not going to buy six of them. So demand goes back down, say, around 1930 and 31. And what does that lead to eviction? Great question. Yes, but we'll talk about that next unit. Don't worry about it here. For all of the 20s, for this question, the economy is booming. All of the 20s, the economy is booming. Not yet that transition. OK, so why is that? mentioned, by the way, agriculture was kind of a loser. Why is agriculture a loser in the 1920s? I don't know. How many of you guys live on farms or work on farms or have family that are farmers? Okay. So you got this much of territory to build, right? So you can do it by hand, a horse and a buggy. And in fact, most of this time, here's my horse. Okay. And, and a plow. There's my horse and plow. And in fact, during most of the 20s, that's what you're using. But what happens with uh, new technologies? They buy more land and take the big tractor. You get the big tractor, right? That means that you can do more faster. More faster. But what happens when your yield goes up? The price goes up. Does it go up? No, it doesn't. It goes down. That means that the supply is up, right? This is a funny thing. And so that means that the price goes down. Now, what did you use to buy this tractor? Money. You borrowed to buy the tractor so that you can get a higher yield. And you do get a higher yield, but you get less per unit. Now, what happens if you didn't buy the tractor? Well, you still get less per unit. Now, you don't have as much of a yield, but you also don't get much per unit. So it's almost a race. Well, I gotta buy more tractors, maybe to get more of a yield to make up for the fact that the, the price goes down. You, if you're dairy farmers, you get this, right? If the price of the milk goes down, you need more milk. Of course, if you make more milk, what's gonna happen to the price? It, it goes down even further. It's a problem. So agriculture didn't, it wasn't like a, they weren't failing, but it was always kind of a problem throughout the 20s. Because of the technology. We'll move on. 